And what that will do is that will do sort of the Windows Explorer kind of sorting where each column header is clickable then. And if you click on it, it sorts by that field. So, and, and again, you get that for free. That's functionality built into the framework. So, if I go and click Enable Sorting, I can go in here and I can, by clicking on the department, sort by department, by clicking on name, sort by name. So it's kind of neat. Extra functionality that you really get for free because it's built into the framework. You just have to configure the, the um, object to allow that. The other thing you can do is you can page your um, grid view. So, for example, let's say this was a very big company that had, you know, hundreds of employees. We wouldn't necessarily want to see one, you know, gigantic web page with all 100 employees in it. We might want to see them 10 at a time, and then you could go from page to page. You know, kind of like, you know, like Google search results or really any search results, right? You do a search and it will show you page one to a trillion, and you can click through each page. So I enabled paging. And I have to specify how many I want in each group. And that's an attribute somewhere here. Page size 10. Since we have such a small database, uh, I'll put in a page size of 2. That way we'll get a, a few pages. We'll only see the employee 2 at a time. So now it shows us those two people, and I can go to page two, page three. All right. So nice little things that you sort of get for free. You just have to enable them because um, they're built into the framework. What was that third one? Enable selection, yeah, that would be, let's go and do that. Right now, notice if I click on this, nothing really happens. If I enable selection, select and it selects that name. Let's see, can I only it looks like I can only select one. The use of that. If it's a really long call and you kind of get dizzy on the way to the end. That's why they're colored. Yeah, that's true. Or you could also do that by alternating, uh, putting in an alternate style for that. Um, I don't know, but you can do it if you, if you can think of something, you can do it. Um, it would make more sense to me if you could multiple select, yeah. and maybe you can multiple select, I just am not setting it right. Let's do a quick Google. What is, what's, what is this, I wonder? Bram Stoker's 165th birthday. That gets a doodle on here. <laughs> uh, more power to him, I guess. Yeah, all right. Slow day. Grid view. Select. Answer, but they're friendly. 
refer to this article. At least it didn't start like virtually yelling at the person. That's what I hate about forums. Yeah, for, you know, yeah. You're in the wrong forum. Go yeah. to this forum. Exactly. It's like you can make uh, you can make the most innocent statement on the internet, and you'll get the most vitriolic responses. Actually, you can do that, but there's nothing built into it. You'd have to code it yourself, and that's a good thing to recognize. All right, is that this is what the framework gives you for free, all right? This is the default behavior. This is what you get for free. Remember, their job, developing.net, wasn't to answer every one of your problems and do all your coding for you. Their job was to provide you a framework to make your life easier. So if it doesn't do everything you want it to do, then you have the ability to go in and, and customize it and make it work the way that you want to. All right. Uh, I can't off the top of my head think of, of, of why you'd want to do this, but apparently some people can't think of it. Maybe to drag and drop? I don't know. I don't know. Good question. All right. That's largely why I don't go over that one, because I can't really think of a good example of when you would do it. So I'll go and eliminate selection. All right. What I want to do now is I want to do the join a different way. And I, this is one where I have to confess. This is a case of old habits dying hard. Because when I learned SQL, that was the way I learned it, with the where clause. So that's the way that I like know up and down. Um, the join command... I don't know as well, so I usually mess it up, and I have to look it up, and I sit there scratching my beard for a while, and <laughs> then I come up with the right answer. So I'm going to use the GUI tool for this one, so as I don't waste precious time struggling with the join statement. So I'm going to do the same page, except I'm going to do it with a join statement. So I'll go to File, New, File web form. We'll call this join to. Bring my SQL data source over. Configure it. Connection string. Go to Query Builder. And I'm going to pick my two tables department and employee. Now, notice it's smart enough to draw a line between the two. So it did the join for me. All right. And it's defined as an inner join, which is what we talked before. Whereas if an employee does not have a department, they won't show up. There has to be a match. And now I can go and say I want department name and or let's do employee name and department name. All right. Let's go and look at this in Notepad so we can see it a little more close up. Select from department, department name, employee, employee name. Then from department, 
interjoin employee on department ID. For two tables, it's not too complicated, but once you start doing multiple tables, there'll be another interjoin on, interjoin on, and all that, and the syntax gets a little confusing. So now we'll go and we'll test it out. All right, there we go. Create our grid view. Bind them. Then we'll go in and make it pretty. We could add the change the column name and add an auto format and all that. Now when we go and run this guy, all right, there is our grid view. Why is it backwards from the uh, other grid view? Why is it backwards from the other grid view? Great question. Any ideas? Yeah, my select statement happened in the other order. In the first one I went select department ID comma employee name. This, or the first one I did uh, select employee name slash, uh, comma department ID. In this one I said select department name comma employee name. Now here's a question for you. All right. This is a philosophical question. Some people like philosophical questions. Some people don't. But here's a question. Let's say I don't like the order that they're in. I, I'd rather have the employee name first. What would you go and change? You got two choices. The one choice is the SQL data source. The other choice is the grid view. What would you go and change? SQL data source, SQL data source. Wrong. Well, not wrong. There, there's no right or wrong. So that's not what I would do. I'd change the view. All right? Now, the SQL data source is what got us into trouble, right, by doing it in the wrong order. That's why we got the goofy-looking results. But keep in mind there's two different things here. There is the data, and there is the manner in which we want to display it. Whenever I have those decisions of, like, wherever there's two alternatives, because I could do this either way, right, Whenever I have two uh, uh, alternatives, I'm, I'm thinking of, is this more about changing the data that I'm retrieving or more about changing the manner in which I'm displaying it? Well, changing the, the, the two columns, really, I'm not changing the data. I'm just changing the way that the person's going to see it. So that sounds to me more like a visual thing. So I make my change to the visual component. All right. Certainly not a big deal if you made the change to the other one. It's, I wouldn't take off or anything, but I would go in and edit columns and then just go and swap those like that. And now when I run it. But every time you do refresh schema, isn't it going to go back to being in the order that you first? Like yeah, but I didn't refresh schema. Well, I mean, if you, like, I don't get when you're supposed to do that. Like, when, you when, when you make a, you refresh schema when you make like a big uh, wide you know, a big change to the SQL statement. If, for example, I tacked a WHERE clause on here to just limit what I was getting back, I probably wouldn't need to do it. If I were to add another table onto this, all right, or if I forgot to, which I did in this case, to get the primary key and I went back and did it, then I would go and do a refresh schema. All right. Usually, because of the fact that um, you, when you do refresh the schema, you... Um, you know, you wipe out any manual changes you made. Usually because of that, I don't refresh the schema unless I run into problems. And I don't seem to be getting the data that I think I should be or, or something along those lines. All right. Now let's go in and let's, let's look and see what happens if we, t if we take Pete out of the department again. So Pete. No longer in IT. I run this, and again, Pete doesn't show up on the list. 
So whichever method I use, if I'm doing an inner join, there has to be a match. If I'm using the where clause, though in the manner which I use it in the first example, yeah, I'm doing an inner join, so Pete doesn't show up. If I use the join clause, well, I explicitly said inner join, and therefore Pete's not going to show up. What if I wanted Pete to show up, but just show a blank for the department? Well, then I have to do an outer join. All right. An auto join with the where clause, um, it, I've seen it done several different ways. It's not really a consistent manner uh, in which it's done, at least in the, the ways I've seen. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in and make a outer join on the data source that uses the join. And if I click on the link between those two tables, I have a choice of leaving it as it stands now, or I can say, I want to see every employee, regardless of whether they have a department or not. And notice what it came up with. Select from department, right outer join, employee on department equals department. Now when I go and run this, we'll see Pete. Whoops, maybe. Now when I go run this, I'll see Pete, but I'll just see Pete with a blank name for department name. There he is. I can do it the other way around, too. For example, if there, was, if there was a department that existed that didn't have any employees assigned, um, it wouldn't show up with either the inner or the first outer join. I'd have to do the outer join going in the other direction. In other words, show me all departments and show me any matching employees that they have. Okay. Questions on this. Next thing we're going to look at is we're going to do a header detail. And we are going to expand this detail page. That's what we'll do for the rest of the class, probably. I'm going to expand this department search and detail page. If you remember, the way the department search worked is we have a link, we click on it, we see people in my wonderful artwork. Let's go and let's add a table that's associated to employee. Um, let's add a dependence table. What's an aggregate that you want to Oh, aggregate functions. Good point. I have not talked about aggregate functions yet. All right. That, excellent point. In fact, that's a, that's a great segue. I'm, I'm, I'm shifting, uh, shifting streams mid-gear, or switching, <laughs> st switching gears midstream, which again is another mixed metaphor that doesn't work too well. An aggregate function. Well, what does the word aggregate mean? Combine or total. So, the SQL statements that we've looked at so far have been SQL statements that have addressed individual rows or individual joined rows. So, we can display an employee and the department that they belong to. Alright? And if we have 100 employees, it will show 100 employees with 100 departments that they belong to. And if we have 1,000, it will show 1,000. Depending on what we're after, we may not be actually interested in the specific employees. Right? We may instead be interested in how many employees there are. All right? Two different things, right? See the, the employees for a department, see how many employees. That's a case of aggregating because we're counting the number of employees there are for a department. All right? What are some of the things that we can do with SQL aggregate functions? We can count, count how many rows there are. We can sum a field. 
So for example, if I had an order and I had a list of items that was on that order, I could sum up the cost of every item to tell me what the total cost of the order was. All right? I can pick a minimum. I can pick a maximum. I can show, for example, you know, which, cu you know, which customer has purchased the most goods. So I can, I can show the maximum sales that any customer or maximum purchases that any customer has. I could also pick the minimum. Show me the minimum um, sales that, that a, a, a customer has or purchases that a customer has. I can also pick average. What, what's the average of my customer sales? So I can count how many things there are how many orders each customer plays. I can total up things. I can give a minimum, I can give a maximum, and I can give an average. There might be a couple more, but those are, the, those are the big ones. So, let's say I wanted to count how many employees were in my database. If I wanted to count how many employees that were in my database, I would say select count star from employee. Notice the difference between that and select star from employee. This is going to give me a list of however many employees I have. If I have a thousand, a million, ten, whatever. This will simply will always return me one number. The number that corresponds to the count of the number of employees that I have. So if I had a thousand employees, this would return the number one thousand. If I had no employees in my employee table, it would return a value of zero. All right. So it's always going to return something, and it will be the count of that. So that's what an aggregate function is. We're not showing each individual person. We're counting how many people there are. Now, let's say that we had, let's add some fields to the employee table. Right now we have the employee ID the employee name, the department ID, let's add an age. Probably not a good idea. Why is adding an age to a database not a good idea? Forget any federal regulations about age discrimination. That's not where I'm going. It's not where I'm going with this. Why? Because it keeps changing, right? It'd be better to, to like put the birth date in there. Because if you have the birth date, you can always calculate the age. Right, if you needed to. But it's not as easy to do this with, with dates. Uh, you know, so I'll put a number in here. So put age. I could pick count and average age. And this will give me two numbers. This will give me how many rows there are and what the average age is for that, for, for all the employees. I could then do minimum age, I could then do maximum age. I could sum the ages, but that really wouldn't tell me anything meaningful. You know, maybe if we had a salary field in there. Yeah, that, that's probably a better one than age. Because then I could do the average salary, the minimum salary, maximum salary and the sum of salary. Yeah, salary is a better field to add there. Now the thing to remember is this is going to give me one row and that row is going to represent in this case everything in the database. Now I could trim that down if I wanted to. For example, if I was only interested in Ohio employees, I could say where state equals Ohio. And that still would only give me 
one row, but it wouldn't be everyone in the database. It would, uh, those totals would reflect just the, the Ohio employees. Now, the fun comes in when we want to sort of break that down into groups. All right? Because, let's say I want to see this. Say I want to see this. I want to see for each department, accounting has five employees. The average salary is thirty thousand dollars. The the minimum is twenty thousand. The maximum is fifty thousand. And the total of all salaries is. 150,000. All right. Then I wanted to see IT. Has four employees, average salary 33,000, 16,000, 65,000, and then whatever the average is. In other words, I don't want to see one number for everything. I want to break that down into groups. All right. To do that, you need to add the group by clause to it. So without a group by clause, your aggregate function is going to return one, one row with whatever totals you ask for. If I put a group by clause in here, I can break down those totals by category of, of some kind. So the statement to do this would look something like this. Select department name. Count star, average salary, men's salary, max salary, sum salary, from department. Now, what do we have to do? We've got to join them, right? We have to say how to match up department and employee. Where department dot department ID equals employee department ID. And then we need to add on to it the group by clause. Now this is something that, that tends to be confusing for students. So I'll give the rule, and then we'll explain why the rule is, is in place. And if you don't understand why the rule is in place, just remember the rule. All right? Look at what we're selecting. We're selecting one, two, three, four, five, six things. How many of those things are aggregate functions? Five of them. Aggregate function, count how many. The star just means how many rows. It really only comes in play when there's like nulls involved, but it's typically good to do select, count, star. All right, but anyhow. Count the number of rows. Do the average salary, do the minimum salary, maximum salary, and the sum of salary. Those are all aggregate functions. That is, they're not true about one row. They're true about some aggregation, some group of rows. All right? Now, what's the odd man out? Department name. That is not an aggregate function. All right? Any columns in your select that are not an aggregate function need to be in the group by clause. So if I have 76 columns in my select and 73 of them are aggregate functions, I know that I need three columns in my group by, right? Because out of the 76, if 73 